is WVUA News at 6 with your award-winning news team, Lynn Brooks, Philip Coleman, weather with Richard Scott, and sports with Gary Harris. Tonight on WVUA News at 6. New signs of recovery in Tuscaloosa. A storm-damaged apartment complex may be getting a new life. We'll show you how. Plus, see how a group of faith-based leaders are taking a stand against Alabama's controversial immigration law. But first, one more step forward in the recovery process for Alberta City. Graceland Apartments in Alberta City were nearly destroyed in the April 27 tornado. And with less than a month until the one-year mark, the apartments have been torn down. Many people who drive by would probably think the property is vacant, but it's not. So what is it like living in just one apartment still standing among all the debris? WVUA Jennifer Edwards has one woman's story. What was left of Graceland Apartments in Alberta City after the April 27th tornado is almost completely cleared away. But one single townhome remains with a tenant inside. Geraldine Horton moved into the only livable unit with rubble still surrounding it in January. She says it's close to the heart of what's still her community. I had planned to stay for a while because I like Alberta and I had been in Alberta, you know, over 30 years. I like it out here and, you know, it was convenient to the grocery store, convenient to the bus route. Horton says it wasn't easy living in the middle of a wasteland, so she was glad to see the debris go. After about the second week, it really got to be, uh, I, don't, I don't even have a word for it. It was a feeling of relief, you know, to see all these, all these memories. All these builders, you know, going away, see the demolition. It was fun watching the demolition. And it was just a sense of relief to know that all this was going to be gone. This week marks Horton's final days in the single standing apartment. Horton says the city has asked her to leave the property and she's found a new home. Tuscaloosa City Attorney Tim Nunley says the city has filed eminent domain proceedings to acquire the Graceland apartment property. Nunley says the city plans for the property to be used in rebuilding Alberta Elementary School or other public infrastructure recovery projects. Reporting in Alberta City, Jennifer Edwards, WVUA News. Nunley told us a hearing is set for April 10th to determine whether the city's acquisition is for a lawful public purpose. New signs of recovery are starting to show up all around Tuscaloosa. McDonald's lovers can breathe a sigh of relief because the Golden Arches are finally making a comeback to one section of 15th Street. The restaurant was hit hard on April 27th. Crews were busy working around the outside today. A concrete truck was on the site preparing new cement. The new building has a more narrow design than the original structure. No word yet, though, on when they plan to open. And over on McFarland Boulevard, you may have noticed a change on Pate Corner, those buildings that took a direct hit on April 27th. But now, crews are moving forward with demolition of some of those damaged structures. West Alabama may be in line for a stormy night. Here's a live look at the city of Tuscaloosa from the WVUA Tower Cam. So what's ahead for you and when could you see some rain? For the latest now on what you can expect, let's go to WVUA's Daniel Sparkman. Daniel. Thanks, Philip and Lynn. Yeah, we've seen this, some storms start to develop across the east side of the state, but over here on West Alabama, we just have too much dry air aloft to get those storms firing this afternoon, only with another hour or so of heating left. It just doesn't look like it's going to happen for us here, but we do have the possibility these storms are going to move on out of here, allowing some more moisture to move into West Alabama, allowing for storms to develop overnight and into the early morning hours tomorrow. Now we'll see, could see some strong wind as well as some small hail with this, and I'll tell you exactly what's going to be headed our direction coming up in home team weather. New at 6, a group of Alabama faith leaders is speaking out against the state's tough immigration law. They're coming out with a commercial, uh, the group Faith Leaders for a Welcoming Alabama. That's a coalition of around two dozen clergy leaders from across the state. The commercial says the law hurts the state's economy, creates a climate of fear, and has divided families. The commercial will air in Montgomery over the next two weeks. Organizers say they want as much change as 
politically possible and are urging Alabamians to contact their legislators to fix the statute. New at 6, Tuscaloosa's Greensboro Avenue gets a makeover. City leaders held a ribbon cutting for the Greensboro Avenue revitalization project. Part of the project includes new landscaping. After this dedication, guests were encouraged to take a walking tour of the businesses along the avenue. Business owner Aaron Christian says he's glad the construction is over. There have been some days it's been kind of tough, but we're glad it's open. Hopefully, it brings some traffic down to us. And well, I, I doubted it for a long time, but it's, it's here now, and we're proud of it. We are um, showing what government can do throughout this city, private developments and government working together throughout this whole city to change it like never before. Now, the renovations stretch from Greensboro Avenue, 15th Street to 21st Street. They were funded in part through funds from Americana Rehabilitation and Recovery Stimulus Act and by the city of Tuscaloosa. Officials say the project took 14 months to complete. On your education watch, Tuscaloosa's mayor stepped out of City Hall and into the classroom. The mayor tried his hand at being a teacher at his alma mater, Central High School. The mayor spoke to Mrs. King's ACT prep class today. They're made up of juniors and seniors. This was all part of Teach for America Week. This week focuses on bringing community leaders across the nation into classes, a chance to inspire those students. Maddox shared with the class his story of how he made it to City Hall. He told us he wanted the students to know they have the potential to achieve anything. 